Hey everyone, Joe Waxman, the astrologer here. Eh. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Uh, in this video, I want to talk about the signs as numbers. Um, uh, this doesn't get uh, talked about enough, in my opinion, uh, but it's very important and it is very relevant to understanding the archetypes of the numbers and the signs. Um, the signs and the houses, rather. Um, so guys, uh, please hit that like button if you can, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and um, um, uh, book a reading with me, macro gold machine at yahoo.com. Um, just on a personal note before I begin, um, as you guys probably know, I've been having a really hard time, uh, with my situation, but it's also, it's a lot more than that. It's like, um, I've been getting really depressed, but it's kind of like a kind of deep existential uh, depression where uh, I'm finding it hard to uh, motivate myself to make videos, to care about anything. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it's I know some deep stuff is going on. I, I've I've looked into some uh, further astrological influences that I'm going through that uh, will take their time to pass, but um, uh, one in particular, um, which I haven't shown on any video yet, uh, but it is a challenge. So anyway, guys, you're going to have to bear with me. And I say this just because like, I'm not going to be making as many videos uh, during this period as I was in the past because of of the way I'm feeling. And, and the videos are going to tend to be a little bit, um, I don't know, less uh deeply researched because i just i just can't like there's just too much going on inside of me right now that that is preventing me from from uh really focusing on, on that anyway uh i just thought i'd share that just to give you guys a an insight into what's going on with me but um I'm just gonna try and focus the camera a little bit <laughs> All right. All right. So let's begin. Number one, um, you know, when, when people talk about the signs in the houses, they they rarely associate it with the numbers. But this is something that I'm big on because um, it it's relevant. I mean, it works. It's 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 deeply integrated into the archetypes. So what is number one? I mean, number one, we call Aries, but let's look at it as number one. Why is Aries number one? Aries number one. We know Aries is number one, right? Aries has to go first. Everything starts with Aries, right? We put Aries at the helm. We put it at the, um, it has associations with the first house, right? It is the energetic correlation with the ascendant. Uh, number one, Aries, right? Uh, the Aries point is is significant in the Zodiac, right? It is it it is the 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 um the sort of uh global or objective um ascendant of the chart right because it's number one it's zero degrees aries is the the, the beginning point of the zodiac uh what are the significations of number one i mean first of all like god one god right uh because of the unification that that comes with being just a single point if you think about Aries, one of the things you can like the focus, right? The focus of a single point, um, the no separation of, of of unity, right? When there's oneness, when there's unity, there's no there's no ability to have a secondary um, anything, right? So like if 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 you're talk if you have the the energy of number one, which we're calling Aries, then it's like there's a kind of fearlessness there because there's no there's no room for for non fear for for fear there's no it's just it's pure pure focus right um so like you know we have this idea of of aries going into battle right because god of war right uh that's the the sort of um uh unity of number 1 where where it's 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 focused and there's no room for anything but action right uh one pointedness um aries often embody this quality with their with their focused energy with their inspiration with their initiating cardinal energy and 
Um, we see this in their ability to start things and uh, their motivating energy, this quality, like a single spark can start a whole fire, right? Uh, this uh, unifying energy is also very, um, can have a religious quality, right? Because it, it has the, the, the unifying factor, the um, uh, focus on on one, uh, putting my hands together, right? The, the unify the unity of one oneness, right? Um, so the the uh, devotional quality of 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 fire, of of unity, of oneness, right? Um, the lack of hesitation you could also say is 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 a quality of 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 uh number one right the, the doing things without without reserves going all in on something being hyper focused on a single point right and this is like the the force that comes with with aries right um we see this strongly represented in aries mars um where it's um you know punch first ask questions later something like that right act first right the, the, the lack of hesitation is a very unified singular quality um yeah um so i think that that about sums it up for for number one right the, this kind of unity unifying singular approach where where um, there's no room for anything other than than focus and action and initiating cardinal energy, right? Um, lack of separation, you could say. Lack of lack of um, uh, diversity. It's just focus and and goal oriented, right? Like a bullet or an arrow, right? Hitting to its target, bullseye. So that that's number one. And of course, number one, you know, they have to go first. They have to win um they're very self-oriented it um invokes the the self the individual the head the body uh so all of those significations as well right and i'm sure we could take it further but i just want to really drive this this point home about numbers being uh extremely relevant in terms of uh the archetypes of the, the houses and the signs right and and how they unite right like one is one one is aries one is first house and they have the same root derivative of being number one, right? So number two, what's number two? Uh, we associate that with Taurus, second house. Number two is is stability, right? We we stand on two feet. We don't stand on one foot. We stand on two feet, right? Um, you know, we have two halves of our body, two sides. And with with number two, you get kind of uh, this polarity where we didn't have a number one, we have a choice now. Number two is all about the, the binary choice of yes, no, good, bad, right, wrong, right? Uh, good, evil, uh, up, down, left, right, yin, yang, right? Um, this binary quality uh, is very simple and um, basic, right? Fundamental. Uh, as far as like, you know, uh, the intellect goes, this can bring up the idea of numbers, numbers, facts, figures, right? Because it's basically like one is not, I mean, you could make a case, uh, one is a number, right? But like, we don't really get to the idea of numbers until we get to number two. Because number one is just sort of like focus. It's like prayer all day, like, you know, chanting, whatever, you know, religious devotional kind of one God, just praying that kind of thing, or like war fighting, just this focus. Number two, we get a, a little bit more diversity, right? Yes, no, right? And that's very Torian, yes or no. It's And that's the, you know, sometimes that's the only answer you'll get, yes or no, right? Like, and they're not going to really elaborate. It's just, it's a firm yes or a firm no. And that's it, right? Like, you're done um, with with uh, the, the number two. Um, you know, making binary distinctions is, is a very number two kind of Torian uh quality um numbers facts figures being simple uh reducing everything down to its simple terms right bottom line bottom line is a very torian thing because 
number two. That's like the 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 bot the bottom of the before you get to number one, which is really just no differentiation. The the most simple differentiation you can get is number two, right? Um. So, what else? Um. Yeah, because of that, like the, this this simplistic sim simplistic, um. I guess maybe simplistic is not the right word. Simple um, reduction of to the lowest common denominator is a number two quality, right? Um, the stability. And I think I covered it all. Um, what other, what other, uh, the shape that number two makes is a line, right? Two points and a line. Like it's important to think what here's an, here's, here's, here's a, here's a hint. Here's something, right? Uh, my Mercury is in Taurus. So I think in pictures. Okay. So that's a clue about number two. Number two is very, um, it does, it does tend to be very, um, uh, physical in its, in, in the way that it likes to, uh, express things, right? If that makes sense, it is more picture oriented, more visual, more sens sensorial uh, than further expressions, right? Um, but it's important to think of like what is what does one mean? Like, so one is a single point, right? Number two is two points, so now you get a line, right? That's number two. So think about uh, the stability there when when thinking about number two, Taurus, second house, right? Um, and counting, right? Numbers, right? That's a very Torian kind of thing. Numbers, finance, uh, money, banking, um, you know, accounting, facts, figures, all the basic delineations, right? That's very a Torian number two kind of um, archetype signification. Just being stable and stubborn and fixed, right? Number two, it's just balanced. It is harmony harmonious in it in its in its in a way you know in a very um in a very simple way right number two all right don't want to over elaborate here let's go to number three uh number three is more dynamic uh number three we call the twins gemini but it's actually a bit more unique than just the binariness of the twins it's there's a third option and the shape we get is a triangle right and what is a triangle, right? What is three? Uh, how do we get to a single point? Like we can triangulate. You ever heard of triangulate? You you have three points in a map. You can triangulate to one point. Uh, that's how they figure out like where something is located. If they can triangulate it, you can figure out the single point, um, single pointed center of that triangulation. And then you can keep doing that. And then you can connect those dots, right? And make more triangles <clears throat> or more shapes rather uh, of any kind. Um, it's the, the triangle is very unique, very dynamic. Um, it, it, um, it evokes a more complicated, elaborate thought process than the binariness of number two. And that's one of the ways we get to the meanings by comparing and contrasting what came before. Right. <clears throat> so we have to contrast number three with number two and number three is, you know, it, vastly more interesting dynamic uh, complex complicated and um dimensional right instead of a flat line we get a triangle right it's uh triangles have have sharp edges right so there's there, there could be like a, a a cuttingness that that we could associate with number three a sharp um a sharp cuttingness also um in a very simple um it is prime we can we have to acknowledge that right and as we get to the upper numbers that will be more significant which numbers are prime which numbers aren't number one uh is number one right it, it, it's its own thing do we need, even need to say it's prime or not prime it's just number one number two um the definition of prime is being only divisible by itself and number one right so number two we could say is prime right Number three, also prime, divisible by itself, and number one. Um, yeah, so uh, the pyramid is another um, uh, indication or, or, or relation to, to um, uh, the th 
three, number three, the triangle, Gemini. Of course, the pyramid is multidimensional. It's 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 incorporating many different things, like four-sided base, usually, which is actually eight sides because of the way they divide it. Uh, so there's many different significations there. Um, but essentially, number three is definitely rooted in there. Uh, the pyramid itself is very complex, complex and more more involved in that, but right. Um you know, we have like the, the triangle, uh, the eye on the top of the triangle, the eye on the pyramid, right? Uh, there's So there's a lot of occult significations there as well, right? Um, three is like the most basic um, dynamic number you can get, right? Because two is like just flat and simple. It's just yes, no, binary, right? Three, we just get, it's, it's complicated, right? It's more than binary. It's It's just like you get the third option and all of a sudden you get worlds, of of nuance and subtlety created out of out of number three that you didn't have a number two, right? Um, you get all sorts of thinking and expression, language, right? Number two is like the voice, uh, the aesthetics, the beauty, the the gold and the food, right? Number three is the 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 expression, right? So if 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 number two is like um, a note, number three is a note with words, right? We, we get to we get to we get the intellect involved and we get the communication and the expression and you know, obviously the hands that would be a number a number three relation um interesting that we have two two arms two hands which is more taurian than anything right um but how do we get the third option well i guess because of the connection to the the brain and how the 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 hands move with the brain so it's more of a, a three it's two and three you know we could relate it there but anyway um yeah it, um so i think it's really important to think about number three when we're talking about the third house or gemini right and how that relates and what that really means what's the significations that the triangle think about the triangle right um many different kinds of triangles the equilateral triangle is what you can ship it. You can move it to, to any side and it's always the same. Um, what's the significance of that? I don't know. It's just very versatile, right? You can do a lot of things with it. And you can triangulate points and make points and connect dots and um, come to conclusions. And you get all sorts of, you know, triangle is one of the most stable shapes there is, right? They make bridges out of triangles because they learn that the triangular shape was... Um, one of the most stable shapes they could you could possibly make right and it's 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 more it's adding an extra dimension right because you, with two you just get two dimensions right the um one dimension really i think one is zero dimensions it's just the point right um two at least it's it's like a flat it's two-dimensional three it's still two-dimensional well maybe it's two-dimensional maybe Two is one dimensional. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> I guess I haven't studied dimensions enough to to be an expert on that. But um, yeah, you're getting the fullness of the triangle rather than just a flat line with the two, right? And number four, let's move on to number four. Number four is no longer prime, right? And it's um related to Cancer in the fourth house, and it's a water sign. It's the first water sign. Uh, <clears throat> and interestingly, four, four in Japan is related to death because of this. It's the first sign that that's non-prime, the first number that's non-prime. It breaks down into two and two. And that's a signification that, that it has this, it has a breakdown quality. It has, uh, death in, in its inherent, in its nature. Right. <clears throat> and that's why these archetypes aren't just like a grab bag of like, you know, stuff that old astrologers said that they were, right? It's not just like, well, it was written 2,000 years ago in some book that this means that, therefore that's what it is because an old astrologer said so. That's not where it comes from. These archetypes are universal. They're universal, meaning that they will have to apply whether we live here on Earth or we live on Mars or we live in some other solar system uh, on the other side of the galaxy or we live in some other, you know, planet on another solar system in another galaxy, right? That's what universal actually means, right? Think about it like in really big terms. 
it has to be it has to you know apply here as it does on like you know um alpha centauri i don't even know right like some planet like way out there in like another another galaxy i'm not an expert on alpha centauri i don't know what that is <laughs> something um but anyway that's what universal means right so number four breaks down uh what did what do cancers do they break down right they, they, and this is not picking on cancer it's just part of it right um it, it's also part of the um feminine cycle breaking down the uterus breaks down every month right um um there's also the 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 divi the dividing quality of, of motherhood, right? Where a mother divides herself, right? Essentially, she makes a newborn, which is, you know, um, you know, in the initial stages, there's no real separation. Then eventually, it's become separate, and then there's two of them, right? There's mother and child, right? That it, is that not four breaking down into it, two, you know, two pairs of two, like two, con you know, having a self. That's cell division. It's, you know, it, it's the, this natural phenomenon that we see again and again and again throughout nature. Uh, and these are archetypal um, um, in, in significations, right? Number four breaks down. It, it has a Cancerian uh, feminine quality to it, um, dividing itself up, right? Producing new, new parts. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, number four breaks down. It is water. Um, you know, it brings up like the emotional quality because, um, you know, that having an emotional release is a breakdown, right? Um, it's um, a letting go, right? You you are, you are uh, dividing yourself up in a sense because part of what you, if it, pre pre emotional breakdown you're holding on to something then you have the emotional breakdown you're letting go of something that's that's another uh kind of archetypal signification of number four because of that separating quality two and two these are not just coincidental this is uh, and I, I it's not like just something i created either i've been studying this my whole life that, and this comes from a more japanese way of thinking about uh numbers <clears throat> which I was um, trained in from a young age, all my life, basically. My parents studied with Japanese teachers, so that's how I know. Um, <clears throat> four is square, right? So we get the significations of a house or a shell, uh, a home, a building, building things, square, right? We live in a square. We live in a box. That's a cancer. That's a cancerian archetype. Um, home, family, all of that, right? Roots. Um, the square is also very protective, right? And so we get this kind of like um, tough outer protection with number four, right? Which is why the crab is the archetype for number for number four, cancer because of the outer shell, right? And crabs aren't really, um, they're not aggressive animals, at least as far as I know. I mean, they're they're not poisonous, they do have claws, but it's just almost like just kind of utensils for eating, right? It's not really, they're not really dangerous weapons. I mean, yeah, it hurts if you get bit, you know, like if a crab bites you, it hurts a lot, but it's, it's not, it's not like, um, dead crabs are not like considered very dangerous usually right um reminds me of, of the 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 meme with the crab with the knife um so i'm sure they can be but uh because of the emotionality all the water signs you know emotionally i mean if you know mars is, mars is pretty dangerous in in cancer right but um yeah, because of the lack of control, the breakdown quality. Right? But yeah, four is very even. It's very square. Um, and so all the those associations that I mentioned relate to number four, archetype, cancer, fourth house. The, the breaking down, the dividing itself is, is really core in understanding 
number four cancer and then the square shape right then we get to number five and it's prime and prime numbers don't break down right and that's one of the significations of like the yin numbers and the yang numbers or male female masculine feminine the feminine numbers are more likely to break down right i mean they're all even the the all the all the prime numbers are the masculine ones that's not better or worse it's just part of their nature part of their archetype uh number five is is um five right give me five high five right um it's it's the pentagram it's it's like the perfect number right um we have five fingers and five toes that's not a coincidence you think it's a coincidence it's not right five is a magical number it's it's like one of and you know and i'm sure like when we talk about the fire signs like aries like of course i'm number one of course i'm no they know that right like and they love they're gonna it's gonna feed their ego when we talk about number five and five being like the, the perfect number right like if there is such a thing i mean other signs will balk at that but i mean five is just like I, first of all i love all the archetypes so like the, i'm gonna you know you know talk positively about all of them but um number five it's just number five like right five i mean how many times do we need to, i say that i got five fingers i got you know on each hand and i got five toes uh and you guys do too right and this is a leo archetype a number five archetype five is five five is the pentagram right um it is a extremely well-rounded number that is prime and does not break down and is good for everything right just about um so i've always i always get the feeling like i know like the common dice are are, are cubical square like but five feels more like dice to me like rolling dice for some reason even though um uh again dice are not five-sided i think there are can you have five-sided dice i don't know anyway um there is an association with uh gambling with with number five and risk taking uh i think because number five is so stable that it craves its um destability de right it craves its opposite uh because like the the prime nature of number five the well-roundedness the multiplicity um think about also this You have the fire signs one five nine and just in terms of one and five number one would be an aggressive animal that uses its mouth or its head so you get like wolf or dog or goat right uh they only they only really have one weapon right and that's their teeth or their their head in the case of the goat right ramming ram right uh the wolf is an aries archetype as well right Alpha wolf. Uh, so the dog is an Aries archetype. Uh, what's a number five archetype? The cat. Right. That's why number five is Leo. Right. What does the cat have? Five weapons because it's got its teeth. Don't look at my teeth. Um, it's got its claw. It's got four claws. So it's got five. Right. Um, so that's a natural indication, signification. Right. Between the ram, which is also the wolf, Aries and the lion or the cat or the tiger or all the felines which is a leo because of the five they got five weapons not one right aries only has one weapon um number five is five weapons um and i'm not saying which is better or worse. it's not it's not about that it's just the numbers the numbers are at play here I'm talking about numbers and the numbers are very significant and relevant right um five always has one head right because it's not an even number so it's like one head and then four um you know if you think about the star the pentagram one is at the top and then four on the sides satanists will inverse it because they like to inverse everything but that's not the the, the standard way is one at the top and then four on the side so that also is kind of like an indication of like you know one person in the center with a bunch of people around them. That's a Leo archetype. That's a number five archetype, right? Being in the center, being in the spotlight, right? With the one and the four, right? One thumb, four fingers. 
Um, because number five does not break down because it's prime, therefore it's more creative. Um, and this is a different way that number four is creative. Number four is also creative. Number four divides itself into two, right? Number five does not divide itself into number two. Number five, uh, in its in its perfection, um, um, shines life and creativity out of it, right? Just like number five, like we have five five fingers, um, and it's such a well rounded number that we can do a lot of creation with it. It's not dividing itself, but it is producing because of, of its of its own harmony, of its own well roundedness. So you can get a lot of creativity out of it. And we're obviously I'm not bringing in the other sides of the archetypes, which is uh, or not very much. I'm just drawing on the numbers to 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 um, uh, establish the archetypes because uh, they are overlooked. Right. There are other ways we can look at these archetypes to derive further meaning. But I'm just keeping it simple for now. Right? So that's number five, like perfect, well-rounded, prime, stable, uh, creative balanced you know and then five weapons right so there's there's more diversity more uh play right more um more interest it's less focused more fun and creative than number one number six this work is really fun because now we can break down the numbers and look at its constituent components right Number six is composed of two Geminis, and they're both ruled by Mercury. Virgo, Gemini, both ruled by Mercury. Three and six. That's not a coincidence. Right? What is the image of, of number six? Um, the, Vir the Virgo archetype? It's, it's a woman holding grain in one hand and herbs in another. But the point is she's utilizing both hands. Three and three, right? What does Virgo number six, what does it excel at? Being intellectual, uh, being orderly, organized, um, being very critical, right? So if you think about, you know, instead of, uh, uh, you know, the grain and the herbs in, in each hand, I mean, that's kind of like uh, pointing to like the, its relation to health. But if you think about like two triangles in each hand, now Virgo is not only a fierce competitor because triangles are, have sharp edges so they can fight, uh, they can also do um, lots of editorial work, right? They can cut, cut things up, which is a Virgo archetype, and they can use both hands and they're very skilled at it. Um, and then reorder, reorder, reorganize and get rid of all the stuff that's unnecessary. Right. And, and this is, you know, perfectly in line with the with how we think about uh, Virgo, but it's just looking at it in a deeper way, relating the uh, the numbers to it. So Virgo, just to finalize, um, number six is breaks down to number two to two number threes. Right. And, and that's um, very relevant and important in understanding the number six Virgo six house archetype. This this quality of using both hands, cutting, pasting, slicing, dicing, being very critical, being very exact, being very sharp, right? Um, you know, Virgo, uh, um, you know, if a Virgo attacks, it's, it's kind of like death by a thousand little cuts, right? Um, if they're going to Virgo in real life will be hypercritical. Not always, right? But that's one of the things that they can do. They can be hypercritical. And this is sort of like the 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 swift action of two Geminis, one in each hand, uh cutting, cutting, right? As as a form of of attack or aggression or or even helpfulness, right? Um, it can go either way. But yeah. Um so I think that's very important in understanding the nature of of Virgo because they're so skilled at at being exact 
and precise. Um, you know, this gives a this gives a lot of of the fundamental meaning to 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 what Virgo, um, to the nature of Virgo, because they have this ability. So that's their where their awareness lies, right? And that's why they're so critical because they they just know they they know about um what they know. I mean, they're they're very logical, academic, uh, and it it it's it's related to to having this um relationship to Gemini, to to, to number three. So number seven is another prime number, and it's Libra, right? Um, it's a little more um, complicated than number five, right? Because number seven, we you can think of a seven-sided star, but it's less, it's it doesn't, it's not as harmonious. Number seven, what we really get with number seven is um, uh, a, a certain level of completion and balance and harmony, right? Because, well, at least in number, out of, out of 12, it's opposed to number one, Um so we get the opposite of the, you know, Aries singular archetype. We get um, completion, balance, harmony, rest, seven day week, right? We rest on the seventh day. That's, I mean, that's not a coincidence, right? Uh, there's so many different significations of number seven. Um, seven is considered a holy number, a spiritual number, a number of completion, a number of God, right? Right. Uh, there's a reason why they say six 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 is the number of the beast, and number seven is seven seven seven. I guess you could say would be the number of of God. Right. Um, it's because it's a number of completion and rest and harmony. And right before there, right before the completion is where you get like the sort of the incompletion, right? Which is what we say it's the not and not that number six is related to the devil, but um. The, because of its incompleteness, there is that quality, right? That's why they relate. That's why 666 is the number of the beast. Um, so it's important to understand the nature of numbers. Um, so with seven, we get a kind of rest and, and completion and balance and harmony. And this is, I mean, that's very Libran in a you know, type. Uh, there's also a connection to number two. Because uh, in a, in a different way, um, because of the balance, right, and the both Venus ruled, and that's that's very significant as well. In the same way that we can connect Gemini and Virgo, we can connect Libra and Taurus, be, because the harmony and the rest of number two uh, versus the harmony and rest of number seven, they, they both have that. Number two is just stable, right? Number two is just sitting there, you know, being balanced on its two feet, two legs, right. Two halves of his body. Number seven um, is not two. It's not binary, but it's a, a, there's a, a kind of completion and a wholeness because it's prime, because um, it's five plus two. Maybe that's why um, two prime numbers, but it's prime in itself. And um, it just has like this, this kind of com, com, uh, very whole whole quality to it um that's just i don't know i mean it's just it's just kind of understood right that's why we do seven day week and we rest on the seventh day as a kind of signification of number seven the connection to god the connection to completion right it's a it's a very it's it's prime but it's 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 prime after five um and five is is too too much fun and creative and round and whole number seven is a little more complex there and we just we rest in number seven and we have peace um the sabbath right the shabbat um in the judeo-christian uh tradition um number eight number eight again is a is a water number because number eight breaks down number eight breaks down first into four two fours and then four twos, right? So it breaks down twice. So it actually breaks down even more than number four because it's um, incredibly unstable, right? And we know this about number eight. Number eight is uh, related to, associated with uh, Scorpio and the eighth house, uh, death and rebirth, right? Transformation, deep transformation. Does it not, 
doesn't break down just once it breaks down twice right and that's significant uh so like there's kind of like um you know if cancer breaks down emotionally and represents the woman and motherhood and the whole feminine you know archetype uh scorpio goes much deeper than that and it and it represents a kind of um a really deep death and transformation crisis right um sex because uh, sex is a breakdown right archetypally it does not belong to number five number five is fun and entertainment and may lead to sex but that's where the confusion uh happens right like just as an a side Scorpio, Scorpio rising has Leo in the 10th house. Scorpio leads with Leo, but Scorpio is not Leo. Right? Scorpio leads with the Leo. Scorpio leads with the confidence, with the brightness, with the, with the, with the, um, you know, self-assuredness, right? Like that's, that's kind of how they lead, but that's their, their, their front, their protection, right? Uh, that's why Scorpios can be very charming. If you notice, they can be very smiley and charm this is all up front of course to to get whatever they're wanting to get right um but in the same way that scorpios lead with leo leo and scorpio having fun and romance and then having sex they're not the same archetypally the reason there's the confusion is because of the connection there they're square to each other right and fundamentally way back when in traditional societies people had issues around sex right like because of the religion and stuff like that uh so i don't know if that's really the reason but there it is it is partially the distortion there the religious distortion i think anyway number eight definitely relates to sex because sex is that that build up and the breakdown right you don't get that with number five so archetypally, sex belongs to number number eight. Um, you know, after sex, it's like a little death. You have an orgasm, and then you're like, Ugh. you know, some people want to smoke a cigarette. I used to. I don't anymore. Um, but like that kind of thing, like afterwards, it's like, Ugh. like, and um, you know, it's kind of it takes a while to build back that energy, especially as you get older, right? If you have sex, then you don't just go like if you're young, you can have sex like you know, a bunch of times in a row. If you get older, you can't do that anymore. Why? Because of that breakdown quality. You're constantly breaking yourself down. Eventually you're broken, right? That's, if you have too much sex, you you break yourself. No, that's not a number five phenomenon. You don't lose anything with number five because it's it doesn't break itself down. With number eight, it breaks itself down. And if you're constantly breaking down, you're constantly losing, losing stuff. Right? Just like a woman can't have endless kids. You cannot have infinite kids, right? Time's a factor, but also biology is a factor too. You know, it's squeezing them in, but just also the exhaustion of the body, right? Really strong women can have more kids. Really weak women can have less kids. Some women can only have one kid. Some women can't have any kids. So it's not like this idea where you can just keep wasting your energy with number eight, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, and just keep doing it forever. You can't. There's a limit. Right? So that's why it's like, you know, break down, build up, break down, build up. That's the quality of number eight. That's why eight is, you know, um, related to death and transformation and uh, sex crisis um also because of its connection to its own breakdown then we can get the idea then the, there's the connection to like um being able to break down other other others as well Right? And then we get into psychology, right? And astrology, right? Because there's a breakdown quality there. If you're breaking down somebody else's mind, what are you doing? You're psychologizing them. You're being a psychologist. Ah, oh, let me think. Why are they doing this? Well, it's because of this, this, and that. Not it's break. You're breaking them down. What about science? Science is breaking stuff down. You're breaking down the to to its constituent components. 
You're figuring out what's going on inside. Astrology. What am I doing right now? I'm breaking it down. That's why it's a number eight thing, not a number nine thing. And then you know this in Vedic astrology. In Vedic astrology, they say astrology is an eighth house topic. It's just somewhere, somewhere like, like the Western mind, they just got a little twisted. They're just like, bad houses. We can't put anything good in the bad houses. It's just like very, um, it's, it, it's too much Christian fundamentalist thinking and dogmatism, right? Like, I think that's what happened. I'm not sure, but I think I think that's what happened. Because uh, they don't have this problem in, in Vedic astrology. But anyways. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. Any case. Clearly, the archetypes are what they are, right? Um, it's just the problem with, with, with religious fundamentalism that, that, that get, messes things up. And then these modern astrologers, modern traditional astrologers, um they just can't wrap their head around that they, around the difference anyway i'm getting off on a tangent so the breakdown process is 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 essential for understanding number eight scorpio eighth house so like science and research psychology astrology you know relationships that are that that are not very balanced or stable are, are very much an eighth house uh, topic, especially really powerful ones, because they're 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 about breaking break stuff breaking down, right? So you get like a lot of criminality in the eighth house, criminal themes, illegal themes, uh, because they're not state; these aren't stable relationships, right? Even like if we talk about shared resources, it's it's not just like you know, equal sharing, that's more of a seventh house thing. It's like, you know, you loan money, you loan somebody money, but you charge interest or you borrow money and you get charged interest, right? That sort of thing. And it's not equal. If somebody's making money, somebody's losing money, but there's a reason for it because somebody needed the money and they didn't have it. Or you get a whole bunch of people to donate money to a cause or something like that. Um. And because of that, there's an imbalance. And because of that, it's unstable. And you get potential breakdown, build up breakdown. So that's number eight. The breaking, the, the, the quality of breaking down into two fours and then four twos has everything to do with uh the archetypes of scorpio in the eighth house so number nine is really interesting because number nine um also a fire sign which we get one five and nine and then nine is the only fire sign that is not prime but you get three threes with <laughs> three six nine right so the opposite of gemini is sag and sag is three and I, I'm sure Sag love to hear this. They're worth three, gem not worth, but like three Geminis, right? Three triangles. So one of the significations that comes up is sort of juggling, right? Um, Sagittarius can be the typical um, um, jester or clown, right? I mean, obviously like Geminis associated with, um, you know, uh, jokes and stuff like that. But really, I think like, you know, as far as like the... The juggling jester, that's a Sagittarian archetype, right? Because three. Um, and it's three threes, which is ironic because three is three, three ones, right? But anyway, it's three threes. And so you get the intellect, but you get a much more kind of evolved, advanced intellect and much more nuanced. And, you know, if you think you can do a lot with three, uh, how much more can you do with three threes, right? Infinitely more, right? Or logarithmically more mathematically more like uh, there's some probably you know calculation we could figure out how much more um but it's more right and you know if if number three is like basic education reading speaking communicating number nine is um very advanced all the same things right advanced skills advanced reading advanced writing advanced you know studying and then you get into philosophy and religion and all, all sorts of the, the very high-minded right things 
that um, would associate with three times which you have in number three, which is Gemini. Three times as much. much. Three more than three times because you're getting like the the interactions and then the 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 right like I I don't know the mathematical formula, but it's more than three times. It's like if you have three or threes, you're just getting infinitely more, or not infinitely, but some some amount more. Much more complex, kind of um, of the same significations. Um, octave, you could say oct an octave higher. I don't like the octave. I don't like uh, using octaves for the planets, but for this it makes sense. Like Sag is the higher octave of Gemini, you could say. Or, I mean, you could say, you know, all three. So you could say Virgo is the higher octave of Gemini and, and then Sag is the higher octave of, of Virgo. Uh, but it's very high-minded, top-heavy, uh, very, you know, dynamic, complicated, um, sophisticated, skilled, talented, but things that take learning and take time to, to master and develop and study if number three is skills of the hands number nine is also skills of the hands over time that that that, that somebody you know studies and develops to a higher degree and skills in the mind too Number nine is also very complete in its own way, because um, you know in 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 Japanese astrology they have nine key, nine star key, nine key, and it's a no system of number nine, right? And then in Vedic tradition they have the Navamsha, which is the ninth divisional chart, uh, the ninth harmonic chart, um, and that's their main. Besides the the main chart, they the you know the the regular natal chart, they also have the Navamsha. That's like the second most important chart. So number nine, like number seven, even though it's not prime, uh, number seven's prime, number nine's not prime, number nine has a very, very whole quality to it, completion, because it's also the last digit before number 10, which is double. Number nine is single. And that's just a system of 10, but there's rhyme and reason. There's there's a inherent harmony, at least, you know, psychologically even uh how we think about these things right we could do different uh you know systems of counting but we have a system of 10 we also have you know 10 fingers 10 toes right two two sets of five right which leads me to number 10 right uh number 10 you could say is two leos or or uh Five, five uh, Tauruses, <laughs> but two and five, right? Is number ten, um, which is interesting to think about, because also you can say like um, both number ten Capricorn tenth house and number five have leadership qualities, but number five is more like show leadership, right? The leadership, the 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 front, the front man, the showman, whereas number ten is a much more um you could say mature or developed or complete version of that but it's more like leadership that can play the front role but uh where the strength lies is really in the the actual um in the 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 um in the actual work and creation of of rules and laws and uh uh structure right the actual leadership position the, the 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 fundamental bones the structural bones of leadership is what were uh what we get in number 10 um yeah i mean if you think about two sets of five it, it becomes very interesting because you have like the perfection of number five times two Number five being so well-rounded, creative, prime, stable, 
and then you get two of them, you get something very dynamic, uh, an interplay, right? Um, a back and forth um, that can, you know, evolve uh, to something more profound than number five alone can have, right? Like you can do more with two hands than you can with one. Because we got, you know, this number of completion, number 10. And it's also double digits. I mean, that's significant, at least psychologically. There's some signification there because of how we come to think about number numbers, right? It's one and zero. And it's a very natural number to us. I mean, it's, it's not just us that have five fingers, five toes. Pretty much all mammals do. Pretty sure, right? Like even, um, you know, like, I think you, you'd find five digits in birds and reptiles and amphibians even, right? And at least the same shape, same basic shape, like four, you know, two two arms, two legs, one head, that's five, right? And then the 10 comes in with the, the, the digits. When you have like two sets of five, then you get the playoff of that. And that's sort of like what you have in any sort of uh, organization or leadership role where you have you have more than one person and more than one um, um, important person even. And you get the you get, you know, a dynamic interplay of two uh, of. Binary powerful influences that are working together uh, for a singular purpose, right? Also business, you could say because of the binary nature, um, the, the creativity that comes from number five and then two sets of number five. So yeah, that's number 10. There's also a cross connection between number 10 and number four in that number 10 is two sets of five, number four is two sets of two. So again, the two sets, you know, divisible by two and um, not just divisible by two, but only div divisible by two that breaks down into two prime numbers, right? And so you get this kind of idea of, of, um, breakdown in number 10, but in a more, um, it's in a different way than number four. Um, it's fundamentally different to, to break down into five, two sets of five than to two sets of two. And this, re this, this kind of, uh, aligns itself with sort of the, the the structural nature of number 10, which is, you know, Capricornian relating to sort of like corporations or organizations, government institutions, things like that, structural institutions that um, at the same way be creative, they can, you know, divide amongst themselves um, and create that way, uh, creating products and things like that. Um, versus number four, which breaks down of itself, right? So anyway, number 11 is also a prime number. And number 11 is the highest prime number, right? So the prime numbers would be, well, I don't know if one's considered a prime number, but there's one, there's, okay, two, three, five, seven, and 11. The three air signs are all prime, three, seven, 11. Uh, the water signs are not prime. The earth signs only have um, number two as a prime number. And the air signs have number one and number five. Uh, fire signs have number one and number five. Right? But the air signs have all three prime. So what is that? That kind of uh, points to the fact that 
prime numbers relate to solid ideas that work, right? Because of the, the relationship with the prime numbers and the air signs, three, seven, and 11. The air signs are intellectual signs. And in order for um, an intellectual, in order for, for, for a thought to be, to be valid, it has to work, right? I could just say like, you know, like put to, like, I could just say nonsense and people are like, that's, we're just dismissing that because none of that made any sense at all, right? But if I say something very profound, people will be like, oh, wow, that's worth something. Both are intangible. Both are in the realm of thought. Uh, one doesn't work. The other works. One's valuable. The other is invaluable. No, has no value, right? So like, in other words, things have to work when you have um, uh, prime numbers because they, these are the realm. It's the realm of ideas, right? And so like, if you propose like a machine and the machine just doesn't fucking do anything and it doesn't even work, it's like, what good is it, right? I have this idea for a mach machine that just costs tons of money and like uses tons of power and does nothing. Right? It's like, who's going to buy it? Nobody. That's not a brilliant idea. Okay. In order to have a brilliant idea, the machine actually has to work and it has to do something that people want it to do. Right. Um, and that's not already, you know, like it has to improve on something or innovate on something. Right. I, so like, okay, I'm going to just as an example, I'm going to make a machine that, that actually makes gold out of, out of, um, you know, mercury or whatever, right. Or lead, um, you know, an alchemical machine. I don't have one, but you know, in my imagination, um, I do. Right. And so like, that would be a very number 11 kind of archetype because it's complicated, but it works. It's prime. It's not breaking down. That's important to understand. Number 11 is not breaking down. So in order to, to match this frequency, it has to be something that is very complicated, but works. Right. And so that's why we get inventions with number 11. That's why we get brilliant kind of thinking with number 11. It's the most complicated, but in order to fulfill the archetype, it has to work. So there's a there's a pressure to create, to have these high-minded ideas that, that that come together in real life and work, right? The engine does something. The machine does something. It does something in a, in a valuable way that we need. Or this contraption, this new device, right? Uh, or this new, you know, ideology or way of thinking about things. Um Number eleven also is a lot of numbers, right? So we have the the archetype of uh, groups and networks that work together, systems. We're gonna have communism or capitalism, which is, by the way, a false par paradigm because capitalism is just what happens when people trade. Communism was thought up by dumbasses who don't want to work and want somebody want to live on somebody else's dime, right? Lazy shitheads, basically. That's what communism is: slavery and assholes and idiots. Um, but capitalism is what allows us to innovate, right? We don't, we're not going to make any machines without capitalism because nobody's being creative. Capitalism equals creativity. It's not this evil thing. It's just what happens when people are allowed to be creative. When people are allowed to be creative, they create value and other people want it. So they're like, ah, oh, here, you know, take my money, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what capitalism is. It's like, I want that thing because that thing's valuable. You made something awesome i want it that's number 11 because these are systems right how are we going to arrange society that's that's a number 11 question because of the complexity and it has to work right what kind of who's going to propose who's going to want to live in a society that doesn't work there's just it's all falling apart nothing like nothing gets done everything's just like poverty and war and and like degradation and you know, just hor you know, horrible, like Kensington, you know, Kensington is, is sort of the, you know, the shithole of, of America, one of them, right, where everyone like just loaded with zombie drug addicts that Philadelphia just um, doesn't seem to give a shit about. Um, so that's like um, a failed, a failed uh, attempt at, at producing something that works like they didn't. You failed, <laughs> basically. Um, and, you know, basically, you know, um, North Korea is another example. Like, what does North Korea produce? Did North Korea produce Apple computers? Did they produce, you know, you know, cars and 
computer chips and great anything. I, they're not doing anything. They're just barely surviving. Communism is not good because communism is just state down control, boot on your neck, right? You don't get a fucking choice. You're a slave to the state and it wipes out all creativity. So these are like the realm of 11, the things that don't match the attempt at creating something that's really harmonious in the realm of number 11 that didn't 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 meet that didn't meet the high expectation the high qualification of of workability of something of things that actually work in real life that's the qualifying factor of number 11 yes it's complicated yes there are a lot of components there are a lot of pieces to put together but in the end does it work is it prime is it not going to break if, it, if it's breaking down it's not working Kensington broke down, broken, right? Communism is a broke down philosophy. Capitalism is just creativity. Like stop putting a bad, th yeah, people can be greedy. People can be greedy no matter what. That's nothing to do with capitalism. Capitalism is just like, we are all gonna you know, do our best to create shit and whoever creates the best shit wins, right? That's a good system, right? That's not going into details, but fundamentally that, as a basis, that's a good system where everyone's just being really creative to, to produce like really great shit. And some people produce phenomenal stuff and other people are like, I love that. I love that you have the freedom to create, right? And I'm going to throw my money at you because I want that creation, that thing that you created. I want some of it. What's wrong with that? Uh, we all got to be slaves because equality. Let's all be slaves because equality, we're all equally slaves. Fuck off. Some people are just dumb and they don't want things to work. So that's where the communists come in. Communists, communists, Marxists, socialists, right? Even the people that want to take away half our money so government can, you know, you know, waste most of it and give us, you know, pennies back, you know, peanuts back. Oh, here's your shitty health care that, you know, doesn't fucking work and like, or whatever, whatever we decide, like, I can spend my money way better than any government can. Like, hate to break it to you. It's not a fucking good system. Don't take half my fucking money and give me shit back and be like, oh, we're, we're this is a great society. No, it's not. Fuck off. I will spend my money under, like, infinitely better than you can, right? And if, if poverty is a problem, make a better system. Make it better so that the, po the people who are uh, uh, in poverty have a way to climb up, to, to pick themselves up. Instead of being subservient to, to assholes or, you know, condescending and be like, oh, you can't do anything by yourself. We need to take care of you. Fuck off. No, you don't. Right. Everyone can take care of themselves. Most people, there are rare cases, of course, disability, fine. But most people, giving them, giving them an opportunity. Stop saying everyone's so fucking dumb. Nobody can take care of themselves. So, you know, like rich, white, liberal saviors. Oh, my God. Everyone else is fucking stupid. We need to take care of them. Go fuck yourself. Really? I mean, there's, there's too many people on the planet. These people who are like, anyway, I'm going off. <laughs> I'm going to say some really awful stuff there, but I'm not going to. So I think some of you could probably get where I was going with that. <laughs> anyway, not going to say it. Let's go to number 12. Um, Number 12. Number 12 breaks down all over the place. Right? <laughs> number 12 is like the least stable of all, right? It's a very high number. It's, it's more more numbers than number 11, 12 numbers, right? 12, 12 digits, right? But it breaks down into it breaks down into six, two, two and six, and then three and four. Right? So we get two, three, four, six as its various divisions. It can break down. So it's very flexible, very extremely adaptable, number 12, right? extremely um uh passive right until it's not of course but um like the ocean right and then so you get like this breakdown this all like total breakdown right from number 12 to all the way down like if you think like uh like six six high two two wide you know a sort of like built tall building skyscraper and it just like falls down and then it's all just like horizontal right that's sort of like the 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 dynamic interplay of Pisces or number 12. Uh, it can build itself up um, temporarily, but it's inevitably going to fall down and disperse into a puddle or an ocean, right? And that's why we got the ocean with number 12. Um, 
endlessly adaptable. Uh, number 12 can see like all, it can see the, 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 all the different numbers because it has them all within them, right? Um, the divisions, right? Obviously not number five, five is not, doesn't fit into 12, seven doesn't, but six, four, three, two do, right? Number one is universal, number one in all of them. So you don't even need to say number number one. You just need to say six and two and three and four. So there's all kinds of divisions, all kinds of breakdowns. We do get the association with sex, with death, with birth, uh, with creativity, high levels of creativity, right? Because, you know, a Pisces, a number 12 can like pull itself, you know, in any different direction because it, it, it's so it, it's so diverse it's so complicated it's so um multifaceted right it can break down in so many different ways right it's very creative in the ways it can break itself down number 12 right we get this association of like you know drugs and alcohol because of the breakdown right um sleeping is a very you know number 12 because it's just like the falling the falling down just laying there in a puddle right um 12 is the final number it's a system of 12 so we have to look at that as well and just say okay well the final number there has some significance being the last number that after number 12 comes one and just as a sometimes um pisces get the wrong idea they're like you know like pisces sun like pisces like it's just a sun it's a sun sign right and they're like, well, we're the most spiritual. That's not it. That's not what it means. I mean, they're highly evolved Capricorns. They're highly evolved uh, Aries, right? What comes after uh, Tor uh, Pisces? What comes after Pisces? Aries comes after Pisces. It's spiralic. So if you want to know what's above Pisces, uh, Aries, right? So go fuck yourself. Like these, like, you know, assholes are like, we're the most spiritual because we contain all the... Uh, it's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. If you're that of that type, you're just like, you know, like a Pisces who's just all like, I mean, all the signs have it, but it's just Pisces, like it's a kind of a thing. Like the Pisces are like, I am the most sensitive. I'm the most spiritual. <laughs> Aries comes after you. So you want to look up to somebody, look up to an Aries. I mean, and it just keeps going. It's spiralic. It's just to put that in place. Right. Anyway. Um, yeah, endlessly adaptable, changeable, mutable, um, breakdownable, and all the other water qualities that also contain within Pisces, right? Death, sex, rebirth, um, even psychology, right? Because it is the personal psychology house comes before the first house, right? So the the just the the mind, the realm of the mind, the hidden mind, the subconscious mind, right? Uh, Twelve is a very rounded, complete number, right? Uh, I don't think we could have a system of eleven. We could, but it just doesn't feel right. It's not a. It's not like a, a number of finality. The way number twelve is a number of finality, All right? Number nine also is a number of finality. So is number seven, right? Number seven is the only prime one. That's it's like that. Um, of completion, right? Um, there can also be, you know, elements of discovery because it's sort of like, you know, so many different ways that you can take apart number 12 that yes, creativity, but also discovery, discovery of new things. And so we're di diving into like secret realms, hidden realms, esoteric realms, similar to number eight, but in, in a way even more complex than number eight. Um, even in a way, um, so much more complex than number eight that that if you get, you know, the archetype is that um, with number eight, you can get lost in drugs or addiction or whatever it is, right? The darker, you know, dark scorpionic caves of number eight. Uh, but you can pull yourself out because it's a, a little less complicated. It's a little more it's a little more simplistic or simple, right? Because of the lower number. But number 12, um, you can get lost and you don't come out. 
that's the, sort of like the difference. Right? You get lost in the ocean of, of number 12. And uh, there's so many different ways that uh, the, those 12 numbers can formulate themselves, you know, breaking down, building up and prime configurations and, and non-prime configurations, you know, it's just endless and you just get lost in the, the numbers. You get lost in the ocean of number 12. Um, yeah, so there's a, there, there's a lot of um, depth and room for play and room for discovery and room for creativity in the number 12, the final number of 12. So guys, I think that's it for the numbers. But I just wanted to put this out to um, really kind of push this the, the this conceptual way of understanding the 12 signs and houses because they follow the same archetypes, right? This is not, astrologers did not make astrology. Astrology has to be universal. Now, I'm not saying astrologers don't uh, play into it at all. They do. But astrology still has to have a core universal quality that is independent of what any astrologer thinks. That's why That's why I'm very confident I come off as saying like, no, they're all wrong because I'm, I'm going back to the core of the universality of, of archetypes rather than what old astrologers have said. I don't, I don't really care. Like anyone can be wrong. Like old astrologers, new astrologers, like they can all be wrong, right? But what's not wrong is the core conceptual foundational elements of what makes astrology astrology. It has to be universal. There has to be universal foundations or it's meaningless and i don't give it's if it's just man-made it was just like people making shit up then i don't care i'm not interested but this is real this is real it really works right whether you believe in it or not it really works right so there has to be core fundamental qualities to this that are independent of what anyone wrote in any book or any astrologer the most famous astrologers who like who cares that's not what astrology is they're like pointing to the sun they're like the sun is bright and we're like oh famous astrologer 2000 years ago said the sun is bright okay that means the sun is bright the sun's not bright because astrologers wrote the sun is bright the sun is bright because the fucking sun is bright and you don't need to know what astrologers said about the sun being bright 2000 years ago to know that the sun's fucking bright right and if they said the sun is not bright 2000 years ago and a thousand years ago and a hundred years ago and all the astrologers are like the sun is not bright because all the astrologers said the sun's not bright and astrologers make up astrology and you're like I'm looking at the sun. The sun's fucking bright. Um, guess what? All the astrologers have been wrong because we can look right now, right here at the sun and, and say, the sun's bright. And so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the fundamental archetypal qualities of the numbers and uh, how they relate to science. And that's not the only thing we can look at, right? We can look at the elements, modalities, um, uh, binary, you know, uh, qualities um, and derive meanings from them too. But the numbers are extremely important to understanding uh, what the, the the universal foundational archetypal um, nature of the signs and houses are. Right? And they're not distinct, right? Scorpio and the eighth house are not separate. Leo and the fifth house are not separate. There is a distinction there to be made, which I made in the video. I talked about that, but archetypally, they're, they're the same root, same source. That's why they come up with a lot of the same significations. And it's not just because old astrologers wrote it in a book. Like that doesn't have anything to do with it. In fact, there's nothing to do with it. There's literally nothing to do with it. Right? They might be wrong. They might be right. But um, it's really irrelevant. This is you know people need. They need the they need the 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 uh, confidence in um, you know books and teachers in order to feel confident about what they're you know what they believe, um, and that's fine. I'm not knocking anyone. Everyone has different skills and talents, but this is one of my talents. I I fucking understand the fundamental archetypal nature of shit, um, so that's what I'm good at. Anyway, guys, this was my talk on the. 
uh, numbers of the signs. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hope you found it interesting. Um, Joe Axman, the astrologer, signing off. Hey. I'm not super happy, guys. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. So that's probably what you're, anyway. Um, it's hard to be overly positive right now, but, you know, I'll carry through. I'll, I'll manage. Anyway, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Book a reading with me. Um, still need your support. So, macro gold machine at yahoo.com. That's my email. You just email me there. And I will see you guys again soon. Uh, you know, I always say laugh it off, take a victory laugh, win before you win. Even though that doesn't feel very genuine right now, maybe I need to hear it more than you guys do. So, set it anyway. All right. I'll see you.